Hi friends, Krista here. Here we are again. I'm so glad that you're here for our third week in February and I hope that you are having a great month. And this weekend, you have an extra long weekend because Monday is family day and we get an extra day off school. So what are you doing? Do you have some plans of things that you're gonna be doing with your family? Well, I hope you have a great time together. It should be lots of fun, I hope, for everybody in your family. This month in children's ministry, we're talking about compassion. Do you remember what compassion means? Well, let's pull it up on the screen and I'll just remind us. Compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's need. You know, it's important that we show compassion to the people who are around us, whether that's the people that we go to school with, like our classmates, our teachers, or our neighbors, the people that we live next door with, or maybe people we see at um, activities that we do, whether that's sports or dance or music, everybody around us um, has needs. And we need our eyes and our ears and our hearts to be open to what other people's needs are so that we can do what we can to try to help them with our needs. Helping other people with their needs is something that we hope others would do for us. You know, that's one of the basic truths that we remember right here in children's ministry, that we should treat other people the way that we hope to be treated. And compassion is the perfect way to do that. So I hope you're gonna stick around for our worship song, which is called Love One Another, and then you're gonna hear a Bible story. Now, do you have your own Bible or a Bible app? If you would like to, you could pause the video and look up this story today in your own Bible and read it ahead before it's told to you on the video. Would you like to do that? If so, you're gonna to go to the book of John chapter six, and right at the beginning of chapter six is where our story comes from today. Now, if you don't wanna do it ahead of the video, but you'd like to see how the video story compares to how it's written in the Bible, you could look it up after the video today. Just a little bit of interest for you there. All right, I'm gonna see you after the video story and I'll be back for a few minutes. See you in a minute.
we found in you love one another love one another yeah love one another that's what we'll do together to help each other and show compassion. Compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's need. Every person is made in their own unique way, and every person can use what they have to show compassion. You wanna see? They can build things. Ooh, I know. They can fix things. And even make people feel safe. Everybody has a part to play. And there are clues, even when you're young, to help you know what your part is. For instance, you might like to help your parents out around the kitchen. Someday you may be a chef. Or maybe you like building things out of Legos. You might grow up to be a construction worker. Oh, these are not toys. What if you really love animals? Oh, how cute! Someday you could be a veterinarian. If you look really close at what you're good at and the gifts you've been given, you might get a glimpse of what you'll be like when you're older. Or, like you'll see in today's story, God can use what you have right now to do something miraculous. I'm not sure what I have to give, but I hope it involves a cute puppy. <laughs> I'll see you next time. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. Let's set the stage. <clears throat> Jesus had been performing amazing miracles and healing people. Great crowds gathered wherever he went. So when Jesus needed a little time away, he crossed the Sea of Galilee with his friends. <sighs> he was probably looking forward to a quiet day on the mountainside overlooking the lake, but the crowds had followed. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Looks like thousands. Should we send them all away? No, I'll talk to them. Even though he was tired, Jesus welcomed the people. He could see the hunger in their hearts, so he sat down on the mountainside and began to teach them. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Through the heat of the day, Jesus kept speaking to the people. As the sun sank lower, though, people started getting restless. See, nobody planned to stay there the whole day, and everybody was getting hungry. Well, Jesus knew how he would provide a meal, but first, he spoke to his friend Philip. Where can we buy bread for all these people to eat? Philip's eyes widened as he looked down over the mountainside. There are thousands of people here. Even buying enough bread for everyone to have one bite would take more than half a year's pay. <sighs> Feeding this crowd certainly seemed like an impossible job. Jesus' friends started to check around, trying to see if anyone at all had brought along some food. Now, imagine you are there on that very same hillside. Early this morning, you heard footsteps and excited voices just outside your home. They say Jesus is heading for the lakeshore. Now, you had never seen Jesus, but you had heard a lot about him, so you begged your mom to let you go along, please. Please, 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 it's not far. And she said yes, <laughs> which is pretty amazing, but she wouldn't let you run out the door unprepared. Here. 
I've wrapped up some bread and fish for you. Thanks, Mom. So you grabbed the bundle, thanks, Mom, and ran out the door joining the crowd. When you finally reached the lakeshore, the crowd was a little overwhelming. But high up on the mountainside, you could see a man surrounded by a close-knit group of followers. Sometimes it's good to be little, so you make your way, little by little, uphill through the crowd. Excuse me? After a while, you were so close, you could hear Jesus. Anyone who hears my word and believes him who has sent me has eternal life. You slid under someone's elbow and found a place to sit on a little rock just a few yards away from Jesus. And all day, you listened. You weren't bored even a bit, because somehow everything Jesus said, it seemed like he was saying it just to you. In fact, you even forgot to eat your lunch. Oops, guess I am kind of hungry. Now you can see other people are getting hungry too. And Jesus has taken a short break to talk with his friends and then you're sad because Jesus is probably planning to send everybody away to get their own food. But then a few of his friends start walking through the crowd. Does anyone have any food? I'm sorry. Oh, you really want your bread and fish at this point, but as tired and hungry as you are, you know Jesus has been working hard all day. So, you clear your throat, <clears throat> and then you say, I do. Great, what do you got? Five little loaves and two fish. Huh, not much. I know, but Jesus can have it. Well, thank you, come along. You follow Jesus' friend Andrew right up to Jesus. Here's a boy with five small loaves of barley bread and two small fish. It won't go far in such a large crowd. Jesus turns and looks right at you. He can see you're hungry and that you've chosen to give up your lunch anyway. And then he smiles. <laughs> it's the best thank you you've ever gotten. He reaches out his hands and you give him your food. Then Jesus turns back to his friends. Have the people sit down. Jesus' friends exchanged surprised glances, but then they started gesturing to the crowd. All right, everyone sit down. Plenty of room. Like a slowly rolling wave from front to back, you see all the people sit down. Then, right beside you, Jesus takes your five small loaves of bread and two small fish, and he lifts them up to heaven. Father, thank you for this food you've given us. Then, Jesus takes the loaves and breaks them. He begins handing them out to his friends, and to the people in the first rows on the ground. He does the same with the fish. You even get some of your own bread and fish back. Mm, yum. You look around and you can see Jesus' friends still handing out pieces of fish and bread to the crowd. But this is way more than what I gave to Jesus. Soon, it seems like the entire crowd is eating dinner. Your own stomach is already full and you still have bread and fish left over. As the people around you begin to finish their meals, Jesus calls his friends again. Gather the leftover pieces. Don't waste anything. You watch in amazement as Jesus' friends go through the crowd with large baskets. And sure enough, lots of people have extra bread and fish to drop inside. When the men finally return to Jesus, they've collected 12 full baskets of leftover fish and bread. That's impossible. But you know it happened because you saw it because you've met Jesus. Nearby, a man exclaims, This must be the prophet who's supposed to come into the world. Now, you aren't sure exactly what that means, but you are sure that Jesus deeply cares for every single person on this hillside. And you're sure that he can take your small lunch to meet every single person's need. When the boy showed up to see Jesus on a mountainside with a crowd of over 5,000 people, it probably never crossed his mind that he could be part of a miracle. All he had to offer was five loaves of bread and two fish, and God used it to feed everyone. You never know what God's going to do when you use what you have to help others. So what do you have? Do you like to entertain people? And no! Are you good with animals? Do you like to make things grow? Do you enjoy serving others? Everybody has something they can use to help others. Could be 
all you need are these, your hands. Your hands can help lift things, clean things, and repair things. Something else you have is this, your brain. You can use your brain to help solve problems or to help create something incredible. And what about these, your ears. Sometimes to help others, all you need to do is listen. And then these, your elbows. Um, I'm not really sure what you can use your elbows for. Oh, I got it. You can use your elbows to help a small child find their parents in a crowd. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Nailed it. The one thing to remember today is this. Use what you have to help others. You don't have to wait until you're older. God can use even the smallest things to make a big difference. I just thought of another use for your elbows. The chicken dance. Your turn. about today's bottom line. Let's say it together. Use what you have to help others. Well, there are some people around me who have some beautiful creativity. And I have been very fortunate lately to receive some gifts, homemade, and some handwritten cards. What do you suppose people giving me these things did for me? Yeah, it did all those things you mentioned, <laughs> great ideas. It certainly made me feel happy and it made me feel encouraged. So people use their creativity, their skills, some things that they had at home, the, the um, kindness of words and their thoughts to encourage me. These are things that I hope to do for other people too. You see, we need to treat other people the way that we want to be treated too. And when we use the small things that we have that God has given us to help others just the way that he hopes us to, that's an amazing way to share God's love. You can use what might seem like small things to you to have a big impact on other people by sharing God's love, by showing compassion and helping others have their needs met. So what are some of the things that you hope that people would do for you? Are you able to do those things for others? I'm gonna challenge you to think about that this week. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for this amazing story that reminds us how incredible you are how you are the God of miracles, how you can use small things to make a big impact. God, would you help each one of us remember the boy in the story today so that we can remember to offer the small things that we have to help you do big things. God, help us to have compassion for the people that we see every day in our lives and help us to remember to use the gifts that you've given us to help others' needs be met. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, everybody, I hope you have a great week. Thanks again for coming. And remember, you can check out today's story in your Bible in the book of John, chapter six, beginning at verse one. See you soon, bye.